Hey guys, Punisher88 here coming to you live from work as usual. Well, I know it's Friday, so I'm titling this as the Thursday Review. Um, I meant to post this yesterday, but I was just really busy and everything. I just didn't get a chance to. Um, so, the other day I posted on the Punisher 88 Facebook page uh, four options for you guys to vote on. There were um, Bucky Barnes the Winter Soldier number one, Star Spangled War Stories featuring GI Zombie number three, Hobgoblin number one, an Axis tie in, or Carnage number one, an Axis tie in. And um, I don't know if you guys got a chance to see them, but I know before. Before I left for work the other day, I checked to see what the votes were at, and they were at zero. Don't worry, I'm not upset or anything. It's bound to happen. So, what I did was I just picked the book at random from the four and um, going at it like that. So, the book that I did pick was. Bucky Barnes, The Winter Soldier, number one. Um, I've been wanting to cover this for a while now, and uh, I did say in one of my other videos that when I did get the book and read it, that I would cover it for you guys. So, that's what I'm doing today. Also, another reason why I'm pretty excited to be covering this is because one of my Facebook friends is actually the artist on this series, which is Marco Rudy. And um, for those of you out there who know Marco's stuff, uh, you know it's it's a pretty intense ride. It's trippy cool stuff. And also, if you guys have ever, any of you out there have ever met Marco Rudy, such as myself, on two occasions, uh, you guys will know that he's he's a pretty chill guy and uh, he's he's really got his stuff together. So so yeah, so I'm really excited to be covering this for you guys today. So, we're going to get right into it, but first, cue that intro music. Hey guys, welcome back. So as I mentioned in my intro, today I'm reviewing Bucky Barnes the Winter Soldier number one. So, um, like with all my reviews, I usually like to start with the cover first. So, let's get to it. Yes, I could already hear you guys saying it, and you're right. I love this cover. Um, <clears throat> I'm not trying to be biased or anything, but because um, I know the last four or five reviews I did, all the covers, I loved every one of them. And um, that goes for this one. Um, the reason why I like this cover so much, it's not just because I know who the artist is, but it's also because I like how he took the Winter Soldier character and broke him down into who he was previously. What I mean is, when you really look at the cover, you see how the outer layer shows him as just happy-go-lucky Bucky the sidekick. Then the that layer breaks down to Captain America, and we all know that for a while Bucky was Captain America. And then the third layer shows who he is now, and it shows him as the Winter Soldier. And uh, I think the representation was just really, really cool how, how Marco Rudy did that. And also, to be honest, um, this picture, getting that as a colored print, a framed colored print, oh my god, I would definitely put that on my bedroom wall because it's so cool. Um, so yeah, so cover A1. Um the story. 
is really good. And what I like that they did with this story was um, they didn't go the same route like the last Winter Soldier series um, that Ed Brubaker did where they went with the whole espionage, super spy type of deal. This is more um, sci-fi related. And um, a thing I, I like about this uh, story is and not a lot of writers can do this or pull it off I mean it's right from page one you're automatically thrown into a conflict and what I mean is right at page one you find out that um, the Winter Soldier is about to be executed and um, you see the alien race that, that's about to do it and the funny thing is we find out that this alien race that's about to execute him only believes in peace so right away you're like wait a minute if they believe in peace why are they trying to execute him for and that's another thing going with I like how the story starts of just being thrown into a conflict they also um, it doesn't give you any any detail or whatever but the writing and with the artwork and everything it's just done so good where you don't really think of that and I like I like when a story starts off like that so you know you're more captured into what's going on and you're not really thinking of anything else so I don't like all my comics like that but I like this one like that especially with this character because you know, the Winter Soldier is cool. <laughs> and then also another thing going with not giving us any detail, but just how the writing is done really good in this situation. Uh, we see uh, Bucky get rescued by his partner, who is an uh, ex-Shield agent named uh, Daisy Johnson. Yeah. And we don't know where she came from, who she really is and everything. But we just know that she's his partner. And the picture of her showing up is so cool. Yeah. Awesomeness. Then the next thing I want to show is there's a, a two page complete layout. The pictures connect. And um, it's basically Bucky talking about why he's out in space. And basically we find out that um, Nick Fury put him there. And he he gave the mission to to Bucky to look over Earth. Uh, like, you know, to protect it from, like, monitor, I mean, from, like, uh, space bad guys. You know, you know, in, uh, extraterrestrial pirates and stuff like that, you know. Um, and we see... That uh, where he's monitoring from is this space station that Nick Fury gave to him, and um, this the whole scene out in space, and and Bucky talking to Daisy about why he's out there and that is just so cool. Look at that. Now this whole scene was done in a in a frame print without all the thought bubbles and stuff. That would be so cool. The, and I, I know I know I'm giving Marco Rudy a lot of praise right now, but and it's not again because I know who he is, but it's just I really like his art, and um, I really find that his artwork has a, a strong uh, Jim Starenko vibe to it. And if you guys out there don't know who Jim Starenko is. Wow. <laughs> I'm not saying I feel sorry or anything, but I mean, I really urge you guys to check him out. Jim Starenko is a legend in the comic book world. Um, if you're going to check his stuff out, I really suggest checking out his um, Nick Fury Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. work done in the 60s. It's a trip and a half, but like really neat. 
he he was like he he was like the inventor of all that weird interdimensional stuff. I mean, Jack Kirby was great at that stuff too, but Jim Steranko took it like a whole other in a whole other direction. I mean, in like the late 60s, he was doing comics with scenes where he had to turn the book upside down to read what was going on and stuff like far out ideas and he was putting it to paper and man that stuff is classic now so I really urge you guys to check check his stuff out if you get a chance um, but back to the book <laughs> um, after the whole space station scene we um, there's a little three-page spread of um, this alien race that finds out that Bucky Barnes is out there watching over Earth. And um, I'm curious to see now if um, if this is going to escalate and uh, if a whole new scenario is going to happen or they're just going to leave it at that or they're going to inform another race or whatever. So, And... Um, and then after that, we see a team up between the Winter Soldier and um, the Submariner. And they go to the Marianas Trench, not the band. Okay, I know you know what I'm talking about. And um, so they're, they're teaming up, and they're going after this group of drug smugglers. And the scene, like the whole chase scene and everything, is another trippy two-page spread. That I think is really cool looking. Ah, man, I love this stuff. And uh, you see, finally, the uh, like Bucky catches one of these uh, smugglers, and he starts, you know, uh, who are you working for? What are you guys doing here? All this stuff. And at first, the the smugglers all like, I can't tell you. We took an oath. We're not allowed. We can't say. But but Bucky Barnes finally. You know, gets the gets this creature guy to to uh, spill the beans pretty much, and uh, we find out that um, this group of smugglers um, are answering to Loki. And when when I saw that right away, I was like, oh damn! And the very last page of the book is really cool, actually, as you can see there. Oops. Sorry about the glare, guys. You just see Bucky Barnes standing there. And he, and he just simply says, your turn. And then you see, next, Asgard. And that's how the book ends. And right right now, I'm really anxious to read book two. Because seeing how Marco Rudy's work was in this book, really can't wait to see um, how he vision Asgard and everything so uh, I really can't wait to read book two which I know came out this past Wednesday and I will be getting it today because I'm going to be stopping by my local shop and making a pickup of a nice chunk of books so I have some new reading material I mean I'm not really done reading my stuff from last week but I'll read it I read it here I'll read it here during the night so anyway um, that was pretty much the quick rundown. Now the goods and the bads and everything. Um, the goods. Uh, cover was awesome. Story was great. Don't even get me started on the artwork. That was amazing. Um, price. Well, it's your typical Marvel book. It's a three ninety nine price tag, and I haven't really seen many 299 Marvel books in a while now. They're start, they look like they're phasing out. So, but uh, I mean, it's standard price. So, um, bad. I don't really, I, I I didn't really find anything bad about the book. I mean, I I liked it. You know, the way the story is written with the whole visual aspect to it and that they just. It meld so good, so uh, yeah, I I didn't really see anything bad, mind you. Again, this is all my perspective, 
I mean, you guys could probably go out and get the book. You'll read it, and you'll be like, oh, this was a hunk of junk, or, you know, what the heck was this? The artwork was too weird or whatever, you know? Again, only my opinion. Everyone has their own views or whatever on whatever they read. So, uh, which is totally cool. And um, would I would I recommend this book? Yeah, I'd recommend it. And uh, I mean, it only came out was it two weeks ago? So I mean, you guys could obviously still pick it up anywhere. Um, for the Montreal viewers out there, uh, again, I picked this book up at Cosmics. So um, go check them out. Um, you know, they carry an Eric over to Metro. If they don't have it and you're interested in reading it, um, ask them about it. And I'm sure they could put in a, an order for you guys or whatever. So, and um, yeah, that's that's about it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Um, I hope you guys stuck around for the 13 and some odd minutes so far. Um, if you guys like what you see, uh, make sure to check out my other videos I have on here. I normally do two reviews a week. I do usually a Thursday review, but if I'm late, I do it on the Friday. Uh, Thursday review is about usually current comics. Uh, I do a Saturday review, which is usually back issue stuff. And then um, since I'm a subscriber to Loot Crate, uh, whenever my monthly loot crate comes in, I do an unboxing video for you guys. That's my promise to my viewers. And uh, in between here and there, I usually like to throw in a, a random video or two. Um, if you guys really dig Epic Meal Time, I have a video with them from this past uh, Montreal Comic Con. And um, yeah, if you're interested in checking that out, Go take a look. Um, I'm happy to say that that is so far my most viewed video since I started posting on YouTube. Uh, I just hit 100 views uh, not too long ago, and I'm curious to see how much higher it can get, along with any other videos, other videos I post on here. So, um, yeah, if you like, take a look around my channel. Uh, make sure to like, comment. Uh, if you'd like, feel free to subscribe, share as much as you want, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. So, like normally every week, I finish off with a comic book quote. So I'm just gonna ring that ring that up for you guys. I know la uh, was it on was it yesterday? Yeah. When I did my um, review of the Marvel 75th anniversary collection book, I, I did something a little different. I went with a Stan Lee quote. It was only normal that I put those two together. But today we're back to uh, plain old comic book quotes. So... This quote is said by the Man of Steel himself, and uh, it goes, Dreams save us. Dreams lift us up and transform us. And on my soul I swear, until the day when my dream of, world, of a world where dignity, honor, and justice becomes the reality we all share, I'll never stop fighting. Ever. Ooh. Those are... Uh, those are some pretty, pretty bold words coming from Superman. But I mean, you know, if you were to ask Batman what he thought, he'd probably say, well, he's a Boy Scout anyway, so of course he's going to say something like that. But whatever. Anyway, I thought the quote was cool. I hope you guys liked it. So, again, thanks for sticking around this long. Um, again, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that jazz. and. Um, yeah, that's it for now. So I'll see you guys on Saturday. Laters.